Right, welcome back to the Museo Storico Aeronautica Militare here at Lake Bracciano in Italy. Today we are going to have a look at the Fiat G55, which is essentially a mid to late war design of the Italian Air Force. Now there's really three aircraft that are important for the time frame that we are looking at, and that is the Fiat G55, the Regiane RE2005, and the Maki C205. Now on the internet you'll find extremely passionate discussions which one of these three aircraft was is in fact the best. And this is a discussion we won't be going into today, but I will make some points for the Fiat G55 which might give you an idea of why I want to look at this particular aircraft. Now all of these three aircraft, the Maki, the Fiat and the Reggiani, used a licensed produced Daimler-Benz 605 engine. Now, previously, the uh, Italians had the 601, which they used with the MC202, but now the Germans actually gave them the more powerful Daimler-Benz 605. Now, the Fiat G55 was designed by Giuseppe Gabrielli, and essentially what he did is he simply took the Fiat G50 and placed a DB605 in there, and he had the G55. Now, the Italians decided to adopt quite a unique little uh, armament with this aircraft. First of all, it would have a 20mm cannon firing through the prop spinner, and then they wanted to place two radar 12.7 machine guns in the top part of the engine cowling and two in the bottom part of the engine cowling. Now, they had some problems with the ones on the bottom, so they, in fact, referred back to the wings and placed the weapons there. However, this weapon loadout of one 20mm cannon, which was a German MG 151-20, and four Breda 12.7 machine guns, didn't really have that much appeal to the Italian Air Force at that point in time. They needed something with a little bit more punch. So they decided to change the weapon loadout to three 20mm cannons and two Breda machine guns, which were still mounted in the top of the engine cowling. Now, when the Italians were presented with these three different designs, that is the Fiat, the Maki and the Reggiani, they essentially made a comparison test between these aircraft. And they concluded that overall, the Fiat was probably the best one. Now, in terms of performance, it probably wasn't as good as the Reggiani. However, when militaries and nations, especially in World War II, look at what kind of weapons they want to adopt going forward, they also look into things like how can we produce these weapons, how fast can we refer our production from our old aircraft to the new ones, how complicated is it, and what is the longevity of the design. And here the Fiat G55 was simply better than the competition that was the Maki and the Reggiani. Now the Santoro, as the Fiat was also known, was finally the aircraft that the Italians hoped that would give them an edge over the increasing number of Allied bombers that were coming into the airspace. With a powerful armament, this aircraft was finally able to take down those B-17s and B-24s. However, even though they concluded that this aircraft is probably the better one from all those three designs, they still ordered all three of them. And the Fiat got a first order of 1,800 machines, which was already pretty enthusiastic and probably a little bit too optimistic, and that order was then increased to 2,400. Now, by the time that Italy signed the armistice, we're still in 1943 here, only 30 Fiat's had actually been built. So that is, you can see here the issue with the production figures, the actual production figures, and what they had envisioned. Now, when the uh, Italy signed the armistice, the factory that was producing the Fiat's was in the northern part of Italy, so it essentially fell onto Axis control, and the production was continued. And uh, quite a few squadrons were in fact issued these Fiat's, and the pilots, from what we know, really, really liked them. And this is for a good reason. The Fiat G55 was able to take down bombers, and it was also able to effectively engage any Allied fighter that might uh, escort these bombers or that might be on a free hunt. So these planes really were powerful and potent in the hands of a competent pilot. Now, as the Fiat G55 was still in production, the Germans started to have an interest in the aircraft. And they themselves flew over a Focke-Wulf 190 Anton 
and a BF109 G4 fly comparison flights against the Fiat, the Macchi, and Re Reggiani. And they, as the Italians did, concluded that the Fiat was probably the best out of the three. Again, the Reggiana was probably better from performance-wise, but it was so complicated to produce that even the Germans shied from giving it a go. Now, when the Germans looked at the Fiat G55, they didn't just see a potent machine for 1943, but they saw a potent machine going forward. The Daimler Benz engine, the 605, that was already mounted in the machine, was a good engine. It was powerful, but it wasn't powerful enough in a couple of years. So the Germans thought about mounting a Daimler Benz 603 engine to the aircraft and increase its performance in the long run. Now, this engine was already in development in Germany. They already had a couple of those. However, the BF109 couldn't mount the engine simply because it was too big. The Fiat's structure and design did allow for this kind of upgrade. So the Germans were exceptionally interested in trying to get a production run of these aircraft to Germany. This also was after the armistice. The armistice had no real influence on the interest that the Germans had in this machine because the production was of course in the northern part of Italy which was still controlled by the Germans. Now there was only one little problem with this plan. When the Germans looked at the production of the G55 in Italy, they saw that one G55 was produced every 15,000 hours. Now the Italians and their industrial capacity wasn't that of Germany. So Germany had a bigger and, and quote unquote better production quality and uh, efficiency than Italy. So the Germans did some math and they concluded that with capable workers and a solid production run, they could turn out one of these machines every 9,000 hours, which is already better than the Italians, but it's simply not as good as what they can do with the BF 109s. At this point, the Germans were turning out a BF 109 every 5,000 hours. So essentially, in the same time frame, you could get two BF 109s for every one G55. And at that point, the added performance and the added bonuses of the G55 were simply no longer that great for the Germans to actually think about changing the production run. Also, this presents you with an exceptional good counter-argument if you're ever being told that the Germans always put quality in front of quantity, because at this point in time, they obviously preferred quantity than quality. Now, one of the things you might sometimes run into when you look at the Fiat G55 is that it was planned to carry a torpedo. Now, this was, of course, at a point in time when the Spaviero, the aircraft that we had in a previous episode, which you can find somewhere here, was uh, really suffering under the strain of the missions that it was supposed to do. And with the Centauro, there was the plan to put a torpedo on the aircraft and essentially give the Italians a platform that had speed and essentially could defend itself against Allied fighters at the same time while carrying a torpedo, which could essentially give them a edge against Allied shipping in the Mediterranean. However, this was of course a complicated procedure. First, Fiat decided to design a new aircraft outright. So you will sometimes see it mentioned as the G57. Very quickly, they abandoned the plan and decided to use the G55 as the platform. Now, a few redesigns had to be made. First of all, the centerline radiator that you can see on the aircraft obviously prevented the mounting of a torpedo. So what they did is essentially take the German idea, which we see on the BF-109, where radiator is in each wing, and do the same thing. They took that radiator, split it in half, placed one on each wing. This allowed them to mount a torpedo that could effectively engage Allied shipping. The only problem here is, we are by now in 1945. So the idea essentially is an idea only and nothing comes from it. It's simply too late. Now the Italian pilots that got their hands on the Fiat G55s really liked them. And when I say really, really liked them, I mean really, really liked them. However, they were never enough to go around. By the end of World War II, not even 300 of these aircraft had been built. And uh, a lot of the squadrons and pilots that initially used the aircraft essentially had to uh, fall back on German BF-109s because they simply couldn't deliver these aircraft fast enough. Now I hope that you enjoyed this look at the Fiat G55 and that you learned something from the video. I want to thank the uh, Musee Storico Aeronautica Militaria here in Italy for essentially maintaining such a great 
great collection of aircraft. And if you ever happen to be in the neighborhood, give this museum a go. It is at the point of this video actually free entrance. So go for it. Now, if you do enjoy what I do and want to see more of this kind of content, please consider checking out my Patreon. Support over Patreon allows me to make these kind of videos and invest more and more time into my research and planning of the channel. And it really goes a long way in helping me maintain the kind of content that you guys like to watch. Now, if you want to see more from the collection of the museum, check out this video on the SM-79, Italy's primary bomber and torpedo bomber of World War II, or this video on the MC-72, which is essentially the fastest seaplane ever built, and I mean ever. So as always, have a great day, good hunting, and see you in the sky.